Traders, how are you? With Marcello doing the recap of what happened in the market this week. Sorry for the, uh, if there's a little bit of bad uh, sound or if you hear a little bit of kids or dogs in the background, but I'm traveling and obviously it's that time of the year. Let's go ahead and get started. So overall this week, the, the biggest piece of news was that we had a very good a news report that came out in regards to the job openings in the United States. This implies that there is a good economy, which basically affected all the markets around the world, including the ones in the US. The US stock market went up by quite a bit. The only one in North America that went down was actually the Can Canadian, Canada, the Communist Republic of Canada that went down. and. The the basic expectation is that since the central bank now sees that the quote unquote economy is doing well, that would imply that they may not continue to increase rates. Now that's a big piece of news because obviously we've had the situation with inflation. We now have the situation as well with the interest rates and the higher the interest rates go, the more that it affects the consumer and the economy overall. And the reason why is because the higher the interest rates, the higher it is to pay for everything, everything from houses to cars to credit card, absolutely everything. And so if the economy supposedly is doing well, they may not continue to increase the interest rates and may actually start to either leave them the same or actually put them down faster than what we thought, which means that the economy will start moving quite a bit again. One of the things this week that I thought was really interesting is Sri Lanka now is starting to experience a countrywide power outage. They said that it was a error in the system that they're trying to replace. Remember in 2020, for those of you guys that have been following me for a while, I told you guys to prepare because the next 10 years, meaning 2020 to 2030, there was going to be a lot of problems, social problems, economic problems, natural disasters as well. And one of the things that I found extremely interesting this week was the WEF, World Economic Forum, actually said that Enjoy this Christmas because 2004, 2024 is likely to bring cataclysmic changes. Now, they always seem to kind of project what they're going to do even before the pandemic. For example, they had a, a simulation of what it would be like to have a global uh, pandemic. So uh, enjoy it because I think next year is going to get a little bit heavy. The middle class in the United States has essentially shrunk by 10% of... All the households of the top 30% of the households, they earn enough to afford uh, what the top 60% top in decades past, meaning the overall amount of the middle class has actually shrunk by 10% and only the top 30% now of households are able to have the same amount of money that previously the top 60% did. So essentially that means that most of the people are not making as much money anymore. And I'm sure that you guys know with the story, I always tell you about five guys <clears throat> that things don't go the same distance as they did when it comes to money. One of the things also that I want to share with you guys, I'm, I'm here in the U.S. right now and, and the food tastes like, like, just tastes horrible. I don't know if you guys have noticed the, the difference, but I used to, when I come to the U.S., kind of get my favorite candies and go to Starbucks and it's just, I can't even go to Starbucks anymore because it just tastes like pure chemicals. That's one of the advantages, I think, of actually moving overseas is a place like a, a, a quote-unquote third world country because the food there is at least natural and we're not eating all these chemicals, which is part of the reason, for example, why we're so sick in the United States, in my opinion. It'll be interesting to hear comments from you guys if you guys have noticed the difference in the food. I know it's a little bit hard to notice when you're in the, in the market, but uh, <laughs> there's one of the little ones. The overseas market news, the notable drop in German consumer inflation in the month of November contributed to a rather positive mood in European markets. European markets were mostly higher with the, the CAC in Paris being the most positive of all. Latin American markets mostly mixed with the Merval going up over 8%, still enjoying the win of the libertarian Millet. And in Africa and the Middle East, the mostly mixed South Africa being the biggest loser there. And then we had the Nikkei in Japan, Japan being the, uh, the biggest winner out in the far, far east, even though all those markets were mostly mixed. Bitcoin and other crypto news, Jamie Dimon, the CEO of the biggest bank in the United States, Chase, warned again 
that if he was the government, he would close crypto and it would be banned, obviously because he can't control it and make money off of it. Bitcoin is up for the third consecutive week. Ethereum is at its highest level since May 11th, 2022. And Bitcoin went up 1.1% at the end of the week. It's up over $44,285 now. Commodities, the Saudi stated that OPEC Plus is delivering a cut of 2.2 million barrels per day. Could look to them extending that to the previous quarter, especially in 2024 if necessary. And crude closed at its lowest level since June, while retail gas prices are hitting its lowest point since June as well. Just ahead of the holiday shopping and travel, which is a great thing for you and I. Uh, I don't know if it's a necessarily a good thing for the overall economy because it's an indication that things aren't going as well as everybody says they are. Oil rebounded somewhat on Friday after the U.S. jobs report and on the plans of the government to refill the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. The SPR, which is this reserve, is the, if you guys don't remember, if you're too young, for example, there was a, a oil embargo and an oil crisis back in the day. So the U.S. decided to have its own reserve just in case that happens again to be able to go ahead and provide the oil to everybody in the U.S. Because without oil, we literally can't live. For right now, anyway. U.S. crude is down almost 4% for the week, 71.23. It's down 18.31% in the past uh, past few months. Brent, which is the international crude, also went down 4% to 75.84%. It's down over 16% in the past three months. Gold hit a record high. I believe it was on Sunday or Monday, but retreated quite a bit this week with the good economic data. Now for the week, gold went down over 3% to 2,550 and silver went down over 10% to 2,307. Financial and banking news, the YouTuber Logan Paul announced in January that he was going to refund $1.5 million to all the people that bought his NFT crypto project, CryptoZoo, because it was proved that it was basically a rug pull. In other words, that, as I warned you guys, remember, just be careful in these markets. But uh, so far, he hasn't returned absolutely anything, which shows you the POS that he actually is. And U.S. house rose, prices rose for the second straight month in November. They were 0.5% more expensive in November, 1.2% higher in October. But overall, the prices in the U.K. are lower by about 1% compared to this time last year. <clears throat> Excuse me, catching a cold. India's central bank went to, left the rates unchanged at 6.5% for the fourth consecutive time. Inflation across the country, which remember, I think India now is the sixth or seventh largest economy in the world and continuing to grow. The inflation is at a four month low at 4.87% in October. And since May of 2022, they've raised the repo rate by 250 basis points. India also, the Prime Minister Modi had a great result in the elections, winning three out of four major states. So it looks like India is going to have a little bit of stability for a little while longer. And also the Venezuelan president Maduro won a referendum this week talking about how they should invade Guyana. Now, they've controlled the territory for years. The region is called Esequibo. But now that they found oil in the region, now it's time to invade, it appears. Because obviously now Venezuela wants the oil. One of the things I think is actually happening, which is pretty interesting, is... <clears throat> it's Conspiracy Marcello. I think that what they're trying to do is actually overextend the United States, especially with the precarious the, uh, situation that we're in when it comes to the debt. So war in Ukraine, war in Israel. Now let's see if we got a war started in Guyana, see if anything happens in Taiwan. But if that does happen, it's going to cause a really big problem in the United States because we can't afford what we have right now. And having to support all of these wars in all of these different places is going to significantly extend the United States resources. Putin is going to run for president again in Russia in March 2024, could retain power in 2030. He's got a great chance to win. He is the fifth presidential term at elections in March 17th of next year. And so far, he has an 80% approval rating. Economic news, the job openings, which is part of those uh, reports that I told you that were really good for the week, fell 617,000 to just over 8.7 million in October, lowest level since March 2021. 
and down from 9.35 million in September. It's the strongest sign yet that the higher rates are dampening workers. Japan, their GDP shrank 0.70% quarter over quarter on an annualized basis. Their economy might actually shrink 2.9% in quarter three. And the Atlanta Fed tracker, which is a, a realistic kind of uh, live measurement of the economy in, in the United States, it's called GDP Now, went to a uh, an unexpected fall of, of 3.7% in November and 3.9% in October. The U.S. did add jobs, 199,000 jobs in, in the previous month, and this is to do with the strikes being over from the Hollywood actors in addition to the United Auto Workers Union. Corporate news, Virgin Galactic fell almost 20% on the news that Richard Branson is no longer is not going to invest more money in the, co in the company right now. This is due to the fact that he said that after the pandemic, the company doesn't have as deep of pockets as before. Alaskan Air Group fell over 14% after they decided to buy Hawaiian Airlines for $1.9 billion in an all-stock deal. They're also taking in $900 billion worth of debt, excuse me, $900 million worth of debt. And Shopify, not to be confused with, with uh, Spotify, they went down over 5% after they didn't provide concrete long-term guidance in addition to having uh, very strong results in 2023, their shares more than doubled. So a lot of analysts now are expecting that their shares are going to actually be in a, in a, a pullback, if you will. JetBlue, 15% up uh, this week after strong travel demand was reported. And in technology, Google rallied after they introduced the new uh, the new AI called Gemini, supposedly the most powerful yet to compete with ChatGBT. The only hilarious thing that happened was is they realized that that actually faked the presentation of the uh, the Gemini. So for now, maybe we should also use Grok, which is Elon Musk Twitter, which just let back the conspiracy theorist Alec Jones. EU policymakers on Friday agreed to a provisional deal to govern AI, which includes things like chat GBT, just in, in, in true European fashion, regulate everything, tax everything. And in international events, temperatures in part of Siberia plummeted negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 50, negative 50 Celsius. Blizzards hit Moscow with a record snowfall because remember, global warming. Disrupts the flights. They canceled flights as well. If you guys haven't been to St. Petersburg in Russia, even though you and I or most people, for example, in the U.S. probably shouldn't go to Russia right now. And Maduro, the president of Venezuela, he ordered the immediate exploration of the Essequibo region for oil and the disputed, quote unquote, disputed Guyanese territory. And North Korea launched more spat. They're planning on launching more spy satellites in the future to spy on their enemies which supposedly is against some agreement the United States and North Korea made, blah, blah, blah. And an interesting fact this week, McDonald's opened its first new location of a restaurant called Cause MCs, which is a, a new kind of uh, new kind of restaurant they're essentially trying to open. If it goes well for them, that they're planning to open nine new restaurants in Texas by the end of 2024. And the well, world's richest families are $1.5 trillion wealthier since the last ranking. It only tallies the Middle East, which the changes that have been received. And among the biggest gainers was a different kind of royal house, the sixth generation dynasty behind the luxury brand Hermes. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next week.